Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's episode of our data science learning series, we will be diving into the world of decision tree in the field of machine learning. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can stay updated with all our exciting data science content. So let's get started. So decision tree in machine learning is basically a supervised learning algorithm which is used for both classification as well as the regression task. So now let's consider this particular diagram over here which displays a simple decision tree. So let's consider at the very top which is your root node that is called as a decision node and each decision node can have multiple subtrees and that can also be considered as one decision node. So for example let's say you have to find out whether a person will get the job or not. So now let's consider that this is your entire data set. Out of this data set, you want to consider that this is your not educated people. These are all your, um, you know, educated people. So maybe this could be one data set and based on such certain skills, someone will get a job or not job. You can basically decide here. Let's say if someone is educated, then maybe they can have another, you know, decision node whether maybe let's consider that, you know, whether this person is graduate or not. So based on that, we can finally come to a conclusion whether a uh, person will get a job or not via decision tree. Some of the terminology which we use. So now let's discuss those. So for example, you have root node, which is the topmost node, which represents your entire data set. Then you also have internal nodes, like, like I mentioned, all of these are internal nodes and that represents the decision points based on the attribute or uh, that the basically the data on which we have divided this. Then you also have branches. Like all of those are the connection between the different nodes, which is uh, called as branches. Then the leaf node, which is at the bottom, based on that leaf node, you decide what is the final output or the class level of your particular data set. Then there are three more like splitting, which is the process of dividing your node into two or more than two sub nodes that is called as splitting. You have also pruning, which means in case you want to remove the some of the sub nodes to reduce the complexity or improve the generalization. In those cases, we also prune uh, some of the branches from the decision tree. Then you also have impurity where you can basically have two basic things, Gini impurity as well as the entropy. So this is basically represents the impurity in your data set as well as this entropy represents the randomness in your data set which you have. All right. So now we will move on to the next section, which is like how basically a decision tree is formed. Basically, there are four different steps in which the decision tree gets formed and those are selecting the best attributes and how do you select best attribute? Basically, there are two different formulas, which are this Gini impurity and entropy in case of classification or mean squared error in case of regression. So for in this tutorial, we'll focus only on the classification and that's when based on this Gini impurity and then entropy, the best attribute gets selected. And how do we find out these two? So this is the formula for Gini, where you have one minus summation of all your classes, J is let's consider all your classes and probability of each class ka square. So P is nothing but the probability here. Same way entropy gets calculated by a, a number of all classes starting from one to number of classes minus probability of each class into log two of probability of that particular class. So again, you don't have to remember these formulas. These formulas will be pre-configured in the models which we will be using. Just for your information, these are all the mathematical formulas which I just simply uh, showed here. So based on these two, the decision tree finds the best attribute and then split the data based on that attribute. So if you see the data splitting which has happened in this tree as well as in this subtree, all of these have happened via these two formulas which is Gini impurity and then entropy. And then this is a recursive process. So until unless you find the leaf node, this process will ultimately go on where you have to select the best attribute from the next subset and then again split the data. And then until you will find the leaf nodes, which are nothing but the class level, it, the process will continue. And that's when at the very last, you will have the output of your model, which are nothing but the leaf, mo leaf nodes. All right. Now, moving on to the next section which are like, you know, maybe I'll just skip this why decision tree and advantages and disadvantages, but this will be there in my GitHub repository. You can anytime come here and then check uh, what are the you know, advantages as well as the disadvantages of decision tree. Just to you know, kind of cover a simple one, which is like, you know, decision tree, like I mentioned, I mean, like you have seen, this is very easy to understand. You can see the entire data getting split into multiple you know, sub nodes and that's when you can easily understand. One of the very common disadvantages of decision tree is 
overfitting you know basically you will find decision tree models you know more or less sometimes get overfitted with the with the data which you have with the noise in the data which you have and that's when uh, many people uh, tend to you know skip this particular model when they have the complex model complex uh, data as well all right so in this tutorial we will be covering this titanic classification and then titanic data set you can find in the kaggle this link will be there again in my uh, description and there you can find that all these multiple columns which are there in this particular data set you can simply come here download this data and this data will use to train a model which will identify whether a person will be able to survive or not so this is a quick overview of this titanic classification decision tree data set where based on their titles whether they have this cabin what was their family size and what were their class on which they were traveling what ultimately i just kind of showed here whether that person is that person whether this is a male or female was able to survive or not and if it was able to survive what was their percentage on which they could survive all right so with this now we will move on to this coding part where first we'll start with the importing our pandas data frame and since i have already downloaded this data set in my local so i'll be using this to kind of import this database in my cell so df equals to pd dot read csv here i'll pass this and if I have to see the first five rows, I can simply write here df dot head, and there you can see all of these columns, passenger IDs, and their name, sex, uh, age, cabin, embarked, and all of these things have come. So now let me go ahead and check what are the different information which are available in this particular dataset. Here I can see that around 891 entries are there in this one, as well as some 12 columns are there, out of which in few columns I see that there are some null records. So now let me find out how many columns have null records. So I can do df dot is null and then find out their sum okay so i can see that you know in this age as well as this cabin and this impact there are three different columns in which the uh, you know there are null records so let me first list on all the columns which are there in the data frame so what i'll do here is maybe i'll delete some of the unwanted columns from my data frame so df equals to df dot drop and which all columns i want Maybe I can remove this passenger ID because this is just that ID might not be helpful in my model training. I can also remove this name. This is also just a single, I mean, simple string. Then you also maybe let me remove this sibling or spouse column because I'm not considering uh, in this particular part, this particular column as well as this PR column and ticket since this is a simple um, text column that also I'm removing. Fair cabin since this contains a lot of null values. Maybe this also might not be much useful so maybe deleting this one two three four five six columns from my data frame and then we'll see how many null values are there in my data frame if i go here and now i can see that only in the column embarked and in the age i have few null columns which are there all right now what i'll do is maybe i'll handle this age column as well as this embarked column let me first handle this age column which is df of age and equals to maybe what I'll do is I'll find all the medians of age and then fill wherever it is missing. So dot fill na dot n. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to fill the median, find the median of all the D of ages, and then wherever it is null, I'll fill that median age. And then if I check the null here, there I can see now the ages, there are no records where you have a zero record. I mean zero, I mean null values. Then maybe next is filling up this embarked column. So again I'll do is maybe in case of embarked i'll simply drop this and to drop i can simply write maybe this is also not needed i'll simply say here x df dot drop na and here i can provide the subset of that so that not all the places it is used rather only the embarked is used i think this df is also not needed here and then if i run this cell here there you see none of the classes now have any null records also what we'll do is let's quickly visualize our data to visualize you all know that there are two different libraries which we use so import seaborn as sns and then maybe import uh, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and then maybe i can do one count plot here sns dot count plot data equals to df and then maybe in x-axis what i can give here is x will be your maybe i can give survived let's take how many of them are survived in my data set 
and how many of them are not and if i run the cells there you can see around more than 550 have survived and around some 320 have not survived so this was just a quick overview of our data set now we will move on to the next section where we will perform the feature engineering on our data set so if i show you the columns of our data set here you see that there are few columns like sex and embarked which are object but you, as you all know that machine learning model understands only the numerical values and so now we'll have to convert these two columns into numerical columns so to do that there is a small i mean a simple library in from scalar so from scalar dot preprocessing import label encoder and this label encoder can simply encode this kind of all this text values into numerical values right and to do that what we have to do is simply assign a value here i mean declare a variable let's to copy this and then transform your columns which you want to transform so maybe df of six equals to label encoder dot fit transform and pass here same this one same way i can simply copy this and next one would be embark column which is again a text column that also i can simply transform by simply making use of this now it has been transformed and if i now run df dot head then you will see that all of these you know uh, s have been converted to two, c has been converted to zero uh, i think male has been converted to one and then female has been converted to zero now our data is perfect all right so now let's move on to the next section where we will divide our data into test and train split so the very first thing from sklearn dot model selection import train test split and then maybe what i can do is simply say that which will be my x column and then which will be my y so from x what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop the survived column so df dot drop and here i can remove the survived column so that this is the value which we are going to predict ultimately and this is from the axis equals to one and then y would be my entire df of survived so from here x i've removed survived and from y i'll keep the survive and then here what i can simply do is x train comma x test comma y train comma y test equals to you can simply use this test train split here and here you can simply decide that which will be your x column which will be your y column and then what is that test size you want to keep Maybe let me keep it as 0.2, which means 80% of data will be my training data and 20% will be testing data. You can also keep the random state here and let me keep it as 42. All right, so now we have this all four variables, this I mean, kind of, you know, decided that this is our X train, X test, Y train, Y test. And from there onwards, we can start training the model. And to train the model, again from the scalar dot uh, tree we are using. So import decision tree classifier, yes. Then model equals to decision tree i can simply give here and then here maybe i can also give the random state which is 42 and then you can do is model dot fit and here you can pass your x train and y train x train comma y train so now we have our model ready so it's now time to test the model and to test we have again from sklearn we have to import the matrices from which we are going to test sklearn dot mx matrix import classification classification report and maybe i can also import confusion matrix okay so but then before uh, using this classification report and confusion matrix we have to one step which we missed is maybe we might have to decide that what is that the y prediction value which has come from the uh, model so i can do y pred equals to model dot predict and here you can pass the test values which you have right and that is our y i mean say uh, x test and here from this you can get all your y prediction value and from here you can also evaluate the accuracy of your model so to accuracy evaluation i can also import here accuracy score and i can simply say print accuracy score of my y test and y prediction and 
and there you see around 74 percent is the accuracy which we have got with our model this is definitely not the great but then that's when since we have considered only few of the classes few of the columns and then this is again a task for all of you to try to tweak in this model try to consider the you know, columns which we had dropped in uh, like you know sib sp pr so all of these columns once we kind of consider then we might have a little more accuracy as well so if we also have to check the classification report so maybe i can simply do print of classification report and here i can pass again white test and my prediction so this is the precision recall and f1 score of our model where class 0 has around 0 0.83 0 0.73 and 0 0.78 precision recall and f1 score respectively and class 1 has 0 0.6577 and 0 0.70 has their uh, matrices which are available you can also print in the confusion matrix for your uh, model which we have what i can simply do is confusion equals to confusion matrix which i'll simply copy from here and here again you can pass on your y test and y predicted value and once you pass on then you might also have to kind of display this part and that we can do via sns which is c1 dot heat map and here you can pass on the value as confusion and we another could be annotation i want as true and uh, maybe i can do fmt as d or maybe i can also use cmap maybe as blue and there i can also so plt dot show and this is the confusion matrix which we have printed here so around for 80 of the values which were kind of predicted correctly for zero and then for 153 were predicted correctly all right so this is the model which we have currently trained you can also visualize the decision tree entire decision tree which you want and for do that you can simply type again from sk learn dot tree import plot tree and you can simply type in here plot tree so this will basically what it will do is it will plot the tree for your model which you have developed so you can type in model here and uh, maybe if i show you again plt dot show oops this will be show so here the model which you have trained and this is how the model the, your model looks like that this is your entire data set then one section got converted into here one other section was here so this might be maybe you know uh, zero this could be your one and from one some other classes all the classes are kind of visualized here and you can also see that you know how the classification and how the entire decision tree got formed based on the data which you had trained with the data which you had trained your model all right so with that we are coming to the end of this video where we have built the decision tree model from this scratch and thank you so much for watching this video please do like share and subscribe this video and also share this video with your friends thank you so much